we're live. We're live. It's Monday night. And so weird. How's everybody doing? Happy Monday. Thank you guys so much for being here. Going to have a fun stream tonight. Well, we have a fun stream every time. What am I what am I talking about? Anyhow, thank you guys so much for being here. Thanks for taking your Monday out to hang out. I hope you're having a great day so far. Uh, we're going to do a cool thing here in a little bit. This blind barrels, if anybody, ooh, that looks so sh like so shiny. Anyhow, I'm going to do this blind flight soon. So I'm going to crack into it. We're going to learn a little bit about it here, start it here soon. And yeah, but I want to say hello to everybody. Bring everybody in. Uh, my mouse just stopped working for a second, so that was cool. Wake up, little mousey. I bet, oh, there we go. I got it back. All right, what's up, Nick? Oh, Nick's at the airport. He'll catch the replay later. All right, no problem. Oh, you know what I need to do? I need to make sure my computer's up. All right, guys. Oh, I'm like a newbie over here. <laughs> Slapshot, cheers, Slapshot. Hope you're feeling better. I saw, wait, you got injured or something over the weekend? I saw a post and then I missed it, but I hope you're feeling better. Julie, what's up, Julie? I feel like I was just talking to you. Cheers. Levi. What's up, Levi? Cheers. Thanks for being here. What's everybody drinking tonight? How y'all doing? Papa Joe's here. Cheers to Papa Joe. Sugar Kitty's here. John Dempsey's here. What's up? Rob. Oh my gosh, you guys. We got to hang out with Rob this weekend and it was such a freaking awesome time. We had so much fun. Uh, Rob and Alexa. I have to say her name really quiet. Because if I say her name too loud, then my machine will go off. I try to call her Alexis, so it helps. But holy moly, we had so much fun. We drank all kinds of whiskey. We like just we just had a fantastic time. It really was so much fun. Mobius is Rob's dog, Rob and Alexis' dog. And Mobius is amazing. Amazing dog. Ah, look at all the people popping in. 1WD, what's up? Cheers to you. Thanks for being here. Soaring Hawk 9001. That is quite the name. Kirkland Single Mall Isla because I'm cheap like that. Hey, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm pretty sure we actually have that Kirkland Single Mall and it's pretty good. It is. Tyler, what's up? As always, if you guys haven't checked out all the other channels that are in here tonight, all the other creators, the digital creators that are here, go check them out. Tyler is amazing. He takes amazing photos and does amazing content. Louisville Bourbon Buzz on Instagram. Go check him out. Thanks for being here. Uh, Jerry Black is here. Jeff is here. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Um, Slapshot's channel. All the channels. Oh, good grief. Yes, dislocated my hip into my hockey game on Sunday. Sore as heck. Orthopedic appointment tomorrow. Pain is there, but not unbearable. Oh, good grief. Ouch. Well, I hope that everything goes well tomorrow. And hopefully you don't have to have surgery or anything. So sorry about that. That does not feel, I mean, not feel, but it doesn't sound fun at all. Um, Let's see here. Oh, okay. You learn something new every day. I just learned something new every day. Okay, sorry guys. Started with some Knob Creek 12. Now on to Stellum Single Barrel. Todd, Todd Pacholsky. Hey, you guys, I didn't butcher that, I don't think. But cheers, Todd. Thanks for being here. Stacy's here, Four Leaf Whiskey. Oh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> uh, James Hogg. Gosh, I'm like in the um, uh, uh, uh. You guys would think I've been, been drinking a little bit. I did record a couple of videos before this. Oh my gosh, I have so many reviews coming out this week. It's like a review overload. You guys know I usually only do reviews on Thursdays, but we're gearing up for Advent, which is coming next month, and we're going to have tons of content. Every single day, there's going to be a video. So kind of been preparing, getting some of the videos out. Oh, also, I just recorded a review for the Arby's Bourbon. So that's going to be the random Wednesday review coming out on Wednesday. Thursday review, Saturday review, Sunday video. All the things, right? So we've got all kinds of things. Um, I don't want to, I'm going to say hi to a few more people. And then I have a special guest that's going to be here tonight. And I'm really excited for it. And it, it'll be just a little bit. We're going to talk about blind barrels, what I'm tasting tonight, which is going to be great. I'm super excited about this. I think this is such a cool concept. Like 
It literally removes all the bias, everything that goes along with drinking whiskey because I have no idea what's in this box. I have no, no clue. No clue, no idea. I know there's four whiskeys in here and we're gonna drink four whiskeys. I'm gonna blind them. I'm gonna tell you what I think and then, then we're gonna do it. So uh, let me say hi to a few more people. Then we're gonna bring in our awesome guest that's in the background. Cheers, Roscoe, what's up? Thanks for being here. Mr. Richie J, I took your word for it and bought a Rebel Cash drink. It was good. Hey, I'm glad you liked it. Glad you liked it. Cheers, Tommy D, what's up? Penelope Architect in your glass tonight. That's always a good choice. I love Penelope. Let's see. Trader's Joe, Trader Joe's Bourbon next. I have not heard about that. Wait, do they sell that in Colorado? I don't know if they do. I haven't actually been to Trader Joe's in like three or four years. And I've only been there like two times my entire life. So... It was kind of like a field trip one day when I was working and somebody's like, you've never been to Trader Joe's before. There's literally one right down the street. You got to go try it. So went and tried it. Never been there before. Yes, I have the volume. <laughs> Bill's trying to make sure I've got my volume on my computer speakers. I do. So we're going to be good there. Um, Raspberry lemonade. Oh, that sounds good. I'm drinking some... High quality H2O. If you can name that video, then you're awesome. Let's see here. Set barrel proof 1792 for 30 bucks. Oh, well, hey, that's pretty good. Cheerio, DC. How are you doing, DC? What's up? Okay, you guys, I caught up on chat. So that means I'm going to bring in the awesome guest tonight. His name is Bobby. And he is one of, or he's the CEO and founder of Blind Barrels. If you guys haven't heard of Blind Barrels, got to go check it out. Oh, also, Cameron came in with, with the right answer. Waterboy, high quality H2O. If you guys haven't seen the Waterboy, gosh, that's like one of my favorite movies. Anyhow, we've got Blind Barrels tonight. I'm excited. I'm going to start pouring these while I bring in Bobby. Hello. Hello. How's it going? Good. Thanks so much for coming on. How you doing? Hey, I'm doing fantastic. Thank, thank you for having me on. I loved when uh, you were doing the shout outs. Tyler is our photographer. I uh, I saw he you know he does all Penelope shots. If you ever see those gorgeous shots of the architect oh, yeah. in front of a blueprint and an overhead shot, and maybe there's a busted cigar in his hand, and uh, I reached out to him I'm like, dude, you got to do all of our photos. Our photos are okay but he put it on another level so if you go to our site any any photo you see there it's on the main page that's all tyler aka louisville bourbon buzz he's the man so shout he's out amazing to his stuff every i mean i've been blown away i don't even know how i came across his profile but i think when i kind of like started my whiskey instagram and everything i was like holy moly like he is amazing super skilled super, super talented. talented i think he was yeah. like having a baby at the time when he was doing my stuff so i was trying to be patient with it because father it's pretty important it's a little important photography whiskey and all that stuff but um <laughs> cheers to you tyler if, you, if, you, if you're watching right yeah now. cheers to tyler i need to pour some of these i'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna start up. pouring these but oh i love this box by the way this is so freaking cool okay you guys I have to like zoom this in I don't, I changed the way my camera tracks, um, zooming. So that's awesome, but it still looks great. I started popping that out. This is such a cool box, magnetic, really cool. So well, you're in Colorado. So when you're, when you're done with it, you can put your weed in there, right? So <laughs> <laughs> just take the foam out and we want to make the oh. box. Obviously we want to associate all these smaller craft brands with top brands with, with top shelf. Um, but we wanted to make it hard for you to ever throw it away. Uh, maybe repurpose it. You could probably blow, grow a plant in there or something. So there's all sorts of different ways you could use that. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> you could definitely reuse this for like for that. You could you could use it for a lot of things. Like I was just looking at that. Yeah, definitely could. This is so cool though. I'm so excited to like try this. I think this is such an awesome concept that you guys have come up with. Thank like, you. How yeah. did this even come about? Like what did you what made you think like I want to do a blind box? Well, you were mentioning Waterboy, and I actually, I, I, uh, I was a filmmaker before I got into this world. I made documentaries. Um, you know, I made a documentary about college athletes' rights that um, helped change the system a little bit. So, 
athletes can make money from their name, image, and likeness now. And yeah. uh, quarantine, just a lot of production shut down, a lot of everything shut down. And my buddy was doing blind tastings with whiskey to, you know, we were all kind of divided at the time. Just we were all in our houses painting accent walls and installing bidets and running out of things to do. And uh, so we, he did a blind tasting. I had always done it with wine, but I'd never done it with whiskey. And I was like, this is amazing. I love, I never really thought of whiskey being as complex and interesting and the nuances and the history and what makes the flavors and all that as fascinating as it was. And I called him, I'm like, this feels like a business. And he's like, yeah, okay. And I'm like, I'm going to figure this out. So if you, if anyone ever needs an attorney, you know what I discovered? You can call pretty much any type of attorney and get a free hour long consultation. Um, so I did that with 16 different ABC attorneys um, until I figured out a way to legally do what we can do. There's a reason nobody's done this to put other people's whiskey into our bottles with our branding on it. So you don't know what it is. It's actually a very complicated process. So uh, it took six months to figure that out. It took a whole nother year to put all the legal elements in place and all the necessary partnerships that we needed. Um, and then we launched in February and we have our fourth release coming out in December. And we still have, I think, about 15 of our third release left. So if somebody jumps in now, they can still get that. It's a special release. Um, you're doing our first release right now, which was from March. And uh, everything in this lineup, um, it's interesting. Like some of them went on to win some of the Fred Minnick Awards, the Ascot Awards. Um, I, wow. think he, I think he follows us. Um, I know his manager, but I, I think some of the things that snuck in there, um, one of them is just a total diamond in the rough. And our process is... We don't just pick brands that we know we like. Um, we 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 go out and discover brands, and we do a blind tasting. So my whiskey wizards, or my spirit guides, as we call them, uh, I throw a lineup at them. Everything's tested blind, so we have a complete bias when we're actually choosing the lineup. And uh, one of these samples actually beat Old Carter in a blind tasting. Um, I threw it in there just as a curveball. I'm like, obviously, Old Carter's going to win because it's fabulous. And it did not. It lost to one of these brands that was in that lineup. So, And they've since gone on to, you know, their star has been rising. But, you know, most of these uh, small craft distillers, they just don't get the shelf space. You know, so distribution, if you're a distiller, you have to pass through a distributor before you can get on a retailer's shelf. And there's only so much shelf space. So the relationships that the bigger brands have and, I mean, you can pay people off. That's another way to do it. Uh, but a lot of these guys are, they're rock stars at 50 miles and they can't get people to even try their brand. And so not only is this a way to try things you never would be able to try any other way. Uh, one of these is from your home state. It's one of these is from Colorado. Let's see if you can tell which one it is. And, um, but if you want to buy a bottle, it's the same price as if you were at the distillery. Um, you know, so if you use that QR code on the back of the table, where, where the tasting table is, mm -hmm. it tells you everything about it, the ABV, the percentage, the mash bill, the nice. distillery backstory, the tasting notes, the aroma, the finish, all everything you want to know about the whiskey. Um, and then, you know, like bottle sales, we don't really make money from bottle sales. I think it's a benefit to our subscribers for them to get uh, an affordable price for it, as well as to support the distillers in the process. So it's meant to be symbiotic. And, um, you know, it, hey, if you can go get a bottle cheaper or go visit the distillery, do it. Um, you know, one of this <laughs> one here maybe isn't too far from where you are, but uh, you can go check them out personally if you haven't already. I have a pretty good guess on which one I think that is already just off the nose of these, mm. but I'm not going to say it yet. I, I don't know, but like if I, mean, I was so guessing, many. Like, if I was going to guess like a single malt, like because that's like the likelihood of single malt being from Colorado, like... Mm. This one's B smells like a single malt to me. B but smells like that's a just malt? off the nose. So, oh, okay. I could I could put up the QR QR code and everybody else can go look at what I'm drinking. They should be able to you click could. it. Yeah, I mean, you could also share it. I don't know if there's a share function on yours. If you did, oh one. yeah, there is. I just didn't. But I don't know what I'm doing. It's all right. It's all right. Okay. Um, if you guys can see this, we'll see if it'll focus in. I don't know if I actually, I changed the focus on my camera. So I don't know if anybody's going to be able to do that. I mean, I'm able to pull it up in screen share if you wanted to, but. Um, yeah. And, and do the bottles on yours say 322 on the bottles on the front? No, they say 622. Oh, you got our second lineup. Okay. That, there's actually, each lineup's got a little bit better and better. So there isn't one from Colorado in there. There is a single malt in there that's not too far from Colorado. For some reason, I okay. thought we was in your March box, but uh, June has something special in there that, I mean, every box in lineup is special, um, I'd say. But um, one of these was our first barrel pick. 
And um, awesome. I think there's only three bottles of it left. Um, and it's just one of these rarities. It's actually going for, I think, two and a half times on the secondary market right now uh, oh, for great. people that are out there looking for it. So some people are in investing. I don't have an unopened bottle at my house. Um, I don't collect mm -hmm. anything. I share. Great whiskey is meant to be shared, right? Yep. Amen to that. Yeah, we're the same way. We literally, we have probably 300 plus bottles open. Oh, nice. We've, yeah, we've so opened you, everything. That's phenomenal. Yeah, I mean, you know, whenever I have somebody over and somebody, I, I'll just, hey, what do you want to pour? They're like, well, I don't want to take all of your wolf. What do, what are we going to collect dust over here? Let's, let's pour some great <laughs> yeah. samples. Uh, and yeah, I mean, I have a bottle of every one of these things at my house. And some of them I'm scared to open because I know one of them there's, it just won't be there anymore. And it's, and it is special. So I might just leave a little sliver in it, uh, you know, for, for a decade to just, you know, the memory just so I can open up and smell it every now and again, <laughs> you know, like that, like that old girlfriend or that old boyfriend where you, you kept their shirt and sometimes you smell it and you go, like, uh, Oh yeah. The memories. Yeah. <laughs> and then you remember how mean they were. And then you go, wait, <laughs> F that. Get rid of that. Yeah. Get out of my way. <laughs> oh my god that's so great no i i agree with you sometimes if we find a bottle that's like really special we want to like finish it or drink it we'll pour it into a sample jar so we can at least keep a little sample and go back to it like sometime we get little barrel samples um we're doing a lot more barrel picks coming up and so everything's going to be a little bit more unique in our lineups um like december has three cast strength um, you know, a couple of them are barrel picks. March is going to be maybe almost all barrel picks. And sometimes they send us full bottles and sometimes they'll send us these little samples and we have everybody in our group. And I'm like, all right, everybody gets a few thimbles because, or a real gram, because I don't want to, you know, I still want to make sure that we can compare it. Cause then once we pick it to be in the lineup, we also have to put the order of the lineup and there's a rhyme and a reason to that too. Um, you, you mentioned one of these, um, felt like a single malt, um, yeah. Definitely and this one. We almost always have to put it first because it just screws up the lineup a little bit or last. It's, it's got some peat in it. This one has peat. Yeah. It's, it's smoky. Not, it's not super like it's not super like in your face peat, but it's good. It's um yeah, it's good. It's it tastes like like a a cask strength. Well, I'll I'll say that. Like earlier I was drinking uh, a hazmat pour. So I was like, I went from this hazmat pour or from this Arby's bourbon to a hazmat or a no hazmat to an Arby's bourbon. Holy shit. <laughs> I, did, I got the ride. Arby's bourbon. I mean, I don't want to ruin your, your review or whatever, but I have it. And I, I bought it just to kind of, I want to do a bunch of gimmicky social media stuff with it. And I want to yeah. put some barbecue sauce in my chest and yeah. roll it around and then pour some whiskey all over me and some other. What's the little thing? There's a, they came with like, I didn't know if it was a barrel chip or if it was like a, a dried piece of meat, I, I, it, but it looked it, like a, like a dried piece of meat. It didn't look like a stave. It looked like a, like a piece of like, like Arby's beef. <laughs> I know it kind of, it's yeah, it's interesting. I ate my first Arby sandwich in like a million years earlier with this review. So that's yeah, just always, a little inside baseball. I know. I almost don't want to, I, I wonder if that's going to become one of those collectibles over the years where I always have a weird collectible here or there, but yeah, that one sold out in like 30 seconds. I had to have like mm -hmm. four people. I'm like, get the Arby's bourbon. I want to just, I just want to constantly make fun of it or uplift it. Maybe it's the most amazing thing ever. I don't know. I mean, Trader you Joe's, somebody's mentioned the Trader Joe's bourbon. I mean, that oh, thing, yeah. it, they say it's 1776. I mean, there's a lot of debate about what it is that they're sourcing and Mm -hmm. people have better flavor profiles and understandings and palates than i do but um yeah I, I was never able to get it uh last year and it's a little bit more accessible this year so whatever it's a 30 dollar bourbon that everybody yeah. wants. yeah yeah so why yep. not you know that perception so you like day yeah a is good awesome B's, yeah yeah a is good a has um it's just like a good like it seems like a like apple juice a little peat Oh, you're pretty, you're pretty good. You know? yeah. There's, you're hitting on some, yeah, there's some vegeto things going on there. Yeah, maybe. for sure. Uh, I mean, I think that sample A, I'm not a big single malt person, but when we have a single malt in the lineup, it's usually something that we think is pretty special and uh, it's made by a real craftsman. Um, and uh, I don't know if you want me to do any of the reveal for you, or if you want me to take off now that I've talked about the company, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to <laughs> harsh your, I don't want to harsh your mellow. Uh, oh no, you're good. I, I mean, 
so how can people, I might have you give you some logistics of this and then I might have you hop off. I might do my thing. Yeah. But, uh, um, yeah, so if, I mean, you can go to Blind Barrels. Uh, we have a quarterly. We have an annual. So quarterly, they ship out um, at the 15th of December, March, June, September. And the, the main reason why we ship out at the same time is really because we have to control our inventory. These are smaller brands. So we only have so much of it. And mm -hmm. also, we have we have lots of people that are doing this with their parents and their brothers and their sisters and their coworkers and their friends that are in totally other areas. And everybody gets the same box at the same time. You know, we mentioned before oh. about the whiskey community. This is about sharing uh, great whiskey together. And, and yeah, I mean, you could do this alone. There's enough. I think there's enough in, in each bottle really for everybody to share amongst two or three or even four people. If you're just tasting okay. in a small group um, and the annual, you're basically prepaying for, for samples, um, you know, for the whole year. And we just finally added uh, the technology. Now you can give a gift. I mean, the problem with giving a subscription gift is you know what to recur on you, right? Um, right? So now you can give a gift and then it's up to them to the re to renew if they want to. Um, and a one-off purchase too. If somebody just wants to buy one box and just send it and it's a one-off and it's a done. And um, we have that as well. Um, and then obviously we have some, we have some hats and we have some tasting glasses and um, you know, we, we try to limit our merchandise so we can focus on the whiskey. I think your logo is super cool. I love it. It's so fun. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, that was a, a guy we discovered in Brazil. He's a self-taught designer. He actually created the the monkey, I think technically it's the chimpanzee, um, around uh, a clothing brand. And he never, he never launched the clothing brand. And so when I was searching for a logo, whenever you start a business, one of the things you want to do is you want to create some branding that makes it tangible, makes it real before you go out to investors. And... Um, I had an idea. The monkey was just going to be this. It was going to be the see no evil monkey. And he was going to have like his tail blinding him. And, and we got something that looked like that. And it was kind of hokey and it was cheesy. And then this dude pops up with this steampunk monkey. And I was like, the hell is this? And, uh, you know, we've luckily, you know, he's actually has a career from this. Now there's, there's about six major brands that, um, we've, we've introduced him to now since we've launched. And, um, so it's kind of cool that our whiskey community goes beyond into the branding world as well. That's so cool. I think it's awesome. And I think what you're doing is awesome because it's like, it gives people, you know, you could even set up a Zoom party. You could have a Zoom party. Everybody gets a box. Like, let's crack open our box, see what we think. Or you could do it in a battle. You could do set it up as a battle too, where you try it. You're like, okay, who can guess the best notes? Because there's no way to cheat in. It's like, it takes it all away. Yeah, there's I mean, always somebody that knows if you've ever done a blind tasting at home where it's always mm -hmm. like somebody's husband or wife or somebody has to come in and know what the thing is and then they don't get to yeah. participate and somebody screws it up and the labels get moved around or whatever it is. Uh, but yeah, we also, you know, when, sometimes we get some big groups and um, I'll jump on or one of the whiskey wizards will jump on and we'll lead a tasting. Uh, we've done it with some uh, major Fortune 500 companies that do it for their clients. And we're happy to jump on. And uh, we love the educational component. Even if you just want to learn about whiskey, we have a master class on our site that's free for anybody. If you just want to learn about the history of whiskey or mash bill uh, or just the tasting process from the appearance and the aroma, the taste, the finish, and the four phases, um, we have all that free. And it's just, once again, an outreach of the whiskey community that says, hey, if, even if you're not a part of us, we want you to learn more about it. Go discover what you like. This is a tasting experience. And what every time we do a group tasting, like we did this tasting actually last week over here with a um, big financial firm, and everybody had a different favorite. Somebody might say, I don't like that. We always say you're going to probably like most of them, and then you're going to fall in love with one or two of them. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, one of these uh, is a 15-year ride matured in a Weller barrel. So it's <laughs> it's... You know, it's 128 proof. Um, it's, you know, there's a couple in here that are barrel strength. Uh, one's from a brand that, that you've definitely heard of. Somebody mentioned when they were in the chat, they mentioned a brand. Um, nice. I think I mentioned them at one point. Uh, and they actually did a special recipe for us, a special mash bill that doesn't exist in any other lineup. So um, everybody in our club gets to try things that are really, really special. Nice. That's awesome. That is really cool. And also, if anyone uh, does join Whiskey 10, if you use Whiskey 10, you can get 10% off of anything, merchandise, hats, uh, subscriptions. Um, so somebody asked what the cost of the subscription mm -hmm. is. So annual, it's $200. Um, so that gets you four shipments. And then and then there is $50 in shipping. The reality of that is we try to compartmentalize the cost of shipping. And 
shipping is more like twenty dollars a box. It's not twelve fifty. Um, shipping alcohol is expensive, unfortunately. Um, but you know, if people see that and they pay for all that, so we kind of tried to deal with the psychology of that quarterly is sixty dollars, and if you do just a one off box, it's seventy. Uh, and then there's fifteen dollars flat rate of shipping for anything. Um, so if you order a bottle, um, you know, like, so, so some of these bottles are, you know, up to $150 at the distillery. Um, we usually sell it for less than that because if we get, if there's seems to be a big margin on what the wholesale is and what that is, we bring the price down even lower than what it is at the distillery. Um, really, cause we don't want people to go, well, that's too expensive to buy a bottle. We want you to go out and support the distillery, whether we make money in it or not, you know, for sure. That's awesome. That is really cool. Sorry, I'm just trying to make sure there's no other ran like random questions. Are they all from the same category, region of whiskey? Uh-uh. <laughs> They're all over the place. Now, the only thing is that everything right now is American. Um, importing alcohol um, in the way that we're able to do what we're doing is really difficult. Um, we are figuring it out so that when we get into tequila, we're going to get into the tequila space probably by 2020, 2024, 2024, we're going to do a tequila box and, uh, and maybe we'll get into beer and wine and I mean, everything comes in a barrel. Right. Uh, but we want to start yeah. with whiskey. And so it, it could be from any of the States and, um, any of the 50 States and yeah, there might be uh malted rye. There might be rye. There might be single malt, American single malt. It could be a bourbon. It could be a wheat. It could be really anything it could be a four grain bourbon that is awesome i know i can definitely tell there's like a, a full variety here that we got going yeah everything's so. completely different so we try to have mm -hmm. that diversity so that I, like i have a brother-in-law that's always like well, doesn't whiskey just taste like whiskey and i'm like you're not supposed to be in the club uh you know <laughs> i'm like dude like you know go drink your your cinnamon jim beam or whatever it is uh, <laughs> It's just okay. You know, you can do a fireball every now and again. Um, but yeah, he, he does he does a honey, he does a honey gym beam uh, with a lot of ice. So that's kind of his drink. And I'm like, if you think all of these whiskeys taste like that, then um and, and we don't have like I would say like I mean your group probably is a lot of people that are experienced drinkers. We have a lot of novices that come in. Um, I still consider myself not a novice. I know a lot about whiskey and tasting. I know more about liquor laws than I do about uh, the tasting process, I'd say, um, you know, I've only been really, I've turned from a drinker to a taster, you know, a couple years ago. So yeah. I'm still on that learning curve. I can't tell you how the esters and the, um, you know, <laughs> somebody will get like deep and talk about esters for like, you know, half an hour. And I went, Nope. Or, well, you know, this yeast strain, um, you know, or I don't have a favorite, um, you know, of the 16 combinations for roses. I don't have an OBS yet. What, you know, I don't know what my favorite, right. Four Roses is. I'm not that far down the trail. I'd say the whiskey um, nerds are, are maybe a little bit harder to please. What we've discovered is um, some people will say, oh, well, you guys are expensive. And then they get our box and they go, you guys should charge more. Um, and they they understand really how special the experience is once they do it. And I, I wish I could tell you that we're just over here with a funnel pouring stuff into a bottle. And it's it's a lot more complicated than that. And there's a lot of partners in order to make this experience what it is. And we're also not, um, no one's buying their way in, into our lineup and we're not saying, Hey, give us a certain amount of money. And, or we're, we're not cutting down these smaller distillers. Um, you know, they're making a profit in this process as well. Um, so we want to make sure at the end of the day, we're a small American business supporting these other small American businesses and showcasing people that are making handmade products with love. That is, and that's the coolest thing about it. That's what I think is amazing because it's like, sometimes you're not going to actually, most of the time there's some of these smaller distilleries that you're not going to have the opportunity to try in your market or wherever you are. Like I just, I'll just say like one right off the bat, that's not in this lineup, but um, I had the opportunity to try recently spirit hound and it's at lions, Colorado and literally blew my mind. Like just absolutely blew my mind. They, have been around for 10 years and they're making this um, like they're making their own malt. They've still all their own stuff. A uh, guy named Craig there is just such a cool guy, super transparent. Like they're using like peated mashes and it is so freaking, it's so good. Like there's, I mean, everything's a single barrel. So it's a lot of love and attention to one barrel here and there, but it's, it's amazing. They're doing about a barrel a day or a little less than a barrel a day. So we'll make it connect with us. If, uh, if you have a contact over there, I mean, that's really how this is, you know, we have, 
people in our group that say, hey, you guys should really check this one out. We've actually had, um, you know, brands end up in our lineup because a subscriber says you, you should check these 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 guys out. And we'll yeah. reach out and we'll put them in a blind tasting. And I think, you know, what's the best is when you meet amazing distillers and they're great people and their whiskey's great. Um, yeah. The worst is when the people are amazing and the whiskey's not as good as we want it to be. I know. That's you so know. Oh, so hard. The people yeah. in the craft industry are, are pushing it to – you know, they're doing interesting things and sometimes it's too weird. And uh, we might do a weird box at some point that just is like uh, a special extra box that people get. Um, we're, we're working on some other partnerships where we're going to start, some, you know, bringing um, samples to people that um, aren't even a part of the subscription. Just send them samples, see what you think. Um, just an extra added benefit. And we're going to be giving away stuff from my stash every quarter, um, some rare allocated bottles. Um, you know, from CYPB, uh, Weller to, you know, Old Antique to, you know, Sour Mash, Toasted Barrel, uh, Michter's, you know, stuff that we can get our hands on. So that way, things that we're lucky enough to get our hands on, we're just going to share with our subscribers and give it away. That's awesome. That's really, really cool. This, um, what was that I was going to just say? I just had a brain fart. Are you looking at B right now? Oh, I remember you said Weller and it made me laugh because there was like this whole conversation in the chat about Weller and everybody from like all, if you like go on Facebook right now or Instagram, it's all memes from last night's Yellowstone episode with Weller 12. Yeah. The blue toy. Yeah. So they were taking shots of Weller 12 and they were, I think pouring doubles of, of blue, of Buffalo. My dad, Buffalo yeah. my dad always asked me like, you know, I don't know. He's, he's new to the world too. And you know, he thinks I'm some whiskey expert now and he'll be like, Bobby, is Buffalo Trace good? I'm like, well, they, you know, they make Weller and they make the Pappy Van Winkle line. I mean, they're they're pretty well known, but it's a thirty dollar bottle. It's decent, you know. If you're gonna get just your Buffalo Trace standard bottle, you know, it's at Costco every other year. And uh, I know some places mm -hmm. it's hard to get, but um, yeah. yeah, I don't think it's a bad whiskey. And um, obviously, the history and the lineage of the place is pretty dope. But um, yeah. now all these smaller guys are getting bought out, so uh, it, it's it's kind of trying to see who's gonna. Who's going to emerge next and then sell out, right? You know, For we just sure. had Balcones did it. You know, Widow Jane, uh, Wilderness Trail. You know, they got six hundred million. So it's it's kind Ugh. of interesting to see kind of where all the money's going, and they're seeing what these where these brands are and where they're going to be. And the demand um, has always superseded the supply. At least we're still at that stage. Right. Ah. So now, do you have a favorite? Did you try them all? Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. want to hear my initial ranking and then, uh, yeah, my, Oh, everybody wants to know how big these are. There's like, are they like two, two ounces? Yep. Two, and a half, two ounces. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You know, I had a buddy who called me. He's like, you know, you need to do smaller samples. Cause I have friends that want to just do it and not wait to share it with somebody. And then the same day, somebody's like, can you make the samples bigger? And I'm like, you guys know how hard it is to just customize a box and get custom bottles and caps and, all that stuff. It's not like just, well, let me just change everything right now. Um, but yeah, we did a lot of research and tried to figure out what was responsible for a tasting, especially if it's a tasting that you're going to share with somebody. And, um, you know, doing two ounce bottles was the most responsible approach that we looked at it. Totally. So uh, let's hear, let's see what you think. What's, what's your thoughts? So my initial ranking, I'll tell you my initial ranking. Cause I would kind of do them back a second time through and okay. do all the, my whole spiel with my tasting notes, but I, oh, this is tough. Okay, so I think my initial ranking is going to be, this is hard, because these two are like, right now, C and D are like, definitely my favorites. Like, one has got to be like a cast strength ride, and one's a cast strength bourbon. Neither one of them seem finished to me. One's, like, one's a straight ride, one's a straight bourbon, I would, I think. Now I could be wrong. This is just my guess. Um, You're good. B, um, I, I'll, A is definitely next, and then B is last. B just tastes... I mean, not taste, but it smells really young to me, and it's a lower proof, which, I mean, it kind of, it just stands not bad. I'm not saying it's bad. It's just younger. You can definitely You're, tell. When you put it in this lineup, B definitely kind of, like, sets itself to the side, but that's your just palate's it. Your phenomenal. I mean, you're on point. You are really on point. And I will <laughs> just say about C and D, um, they're both barrel proof, and so obviously you like your proof. And mm -hmm. I will say, you know, if, if you put a little bit of water in that, some people go, oh, there's a lot of whiskey. I'm sure everyone's listening to you. So the high proof, I like it high proof. But okay. at the end, I like to put a little water in there. And I'll tell you, C and D, um, especially D, will dance in your mouth if you put just a little bit of water into it. It's 
It's crazy good. <laughs> so, so these are, uh, I don't know if you want me to tell you what anything is. Uh, uh, I'm going to hold this. off. I'm going to do okay. a reveal at the very end. Okay. You do the reveal. You you let it you let it be what it is. And yeah, each one <laughs> of the distillers and the there's a great backstory about all these. And uh, yeah, I think B has, uh, I like the nose on B because it, it reminds me of the Pirates of the Caribbean. If you ever go to Disneyland and there's kind of that murky smell that you like, there's kind of this interesting uh, and I think the way they proof that down is the way they do it. Um, we almost did a cash drink version of that, which is drastically different. Sometimes when you proof it down, it's just a watered down version of what it is. But um, this one is very different in the proof down version. Um, a is what you thought it was. And it's just um, the what he's doing um, to, to dry, um, you know, the barley is a little bit different. And uh, in that process. And then, yeah, um, A, B and C have something in common. Um, and C and D uh, are both barrel proof. And D is that barrel pick that I was telling you about. Nice. We did that. Well, hey, I, I like the barrel pick. <laughs> yeah. And that's and I'll tell you, that's the bottle that right now in the in, people have been trying to get their hands on this bottle. And there's one barrel of it. You know, it was a 15 year ride matured in a Weller barrel. And it's it's 128 proof. And you'd think that. Honestly, I think C tastes hotter than D when I when I go through a tasting of it. But um, I don't know if the Weller barrel like mellowed it out, like that weeded finish. I don't know. Right. I don't know That's what it was. City. But um, D is dangerous because you could just drink this. It's like a summer sipper, but it's 128 proof. And all of a sudden, God's pulling on your cheeks and you got to pick up the kids. And you're <laughs> like, baby, can you pick up the kids? I was irresponsible right now. I didn't realize that I put 128 proof in my mouth. Um <laughs> I mean, I had 146 proof in my mouth earlier. Dang, today? Yeah, that was, it was the, it's a secret review that's coming out, but I'll just say I alluded to it earlier when I was talking about something. So that's all I'm going to say. Yeah, I've been waiting to try the Coy Hill hazmat lately. I haven't had a chance to get a hold of it, but somebody keeps saying they're going to get it. And I'm like, okay, we'll bring it by. I'll, I'll let I've you try got some one. Stuff. We have one that we won in a raffle last year. Nice. Well, there it's you go. It's pretty good. It's good. So. Well, I'll let you go. And, uh, you know, thank awesome. you so much for having me on. And uh, once again, everybody, Blind Barrels, uh, if you use Whiskey 10, you get 10% off anything on our store, whether it's a one-off, whether it's a shirt, a hat, a tasting glass, or even an annual subscription, uh, you can get 10% off. And you can give it as a gift. And uh, we only have, I think, uh, 100 spots left um, if for new members going into uh, this next quarter. So um, I will say when people get in our club, they don't leave. So at some point, we're going to cap our membership. Um, because there's going to be only so much craft whiskey that we can really go around. Um, but we really enjoyed it. I love, I love uh, your show, and thank you so much for having, having yeah, me Yeah, thank on. you so much. I'm, ex I'm so excited to share what these are with everybody and just uh, dive into these a little more. So thank you very much for coming on. And, uh, yeah, everybody, blindbarrels.com. You can check it out. It's awesome. And thank you so much, Bobby. My pleasure. Thank you so much. Yeah, take care. Bye. My mouse stopped working. You guys, my mouse stopped working. <laughs> All right, everybody. I'm going to catch back up on chat. My mouse stopped working. That was really cool uh, to have Bobby jump in for a few minutes just to chat about these blind barrels. But I was so excited to get this and try this. Like, I love, I love the idea behind this. I love the concept. I think it's really fun, really cool. So, anyhow, you guys, uh, how's everybody doing? That... There's some really good pours in this and I'm, yeah, I'm excited to tell you guys what I think. So, uh, ba, ba, ba. doggy, Hey, drifting drams, Ethan and Katie are here. Joshua F Gary Franchi <laughs> fifth rose is the best. Eric says everybody. If you haven't checked out to all the channels that are here, subscribe, like done all that jazz Northwest bourbon in the house. You know what I mean? Check them all out. Subscribe, like, uh, yeah, I see there's a Lucan's in here. Cheers, Lucan's. Rob's here. Cheers again. Oh, yeah, I said cheers. I'm excited to see what these are, too. Really, excuse me, excited. I'm going to tell you guys my thoughts in a second. I'm getting ready for Matt. Matt. Hey, Zach Jones, how you doing? Jeffrey Wack. Hello again, Whiskey Friends. How's everybody doing tonight? Ba, 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 ba. Koi Hill is so freaking good. So freaking good. Let's see here. Sip. 
Brian Bailey, what's up? Sipping on Blue Note, my first live. Oh, thank you for being here. I just well, I just noticed that I've never seen your name before. So thanks for being here. Cheers to you. Got to feed the mouse. I don't know what was going on with this thing, but it was like, it was taking a nap. It was like, I'm not ready for this. I'm not ready for this. There's too much pressure. <laughs> Let's see here. What did I, did I miss anything else in the chat? Okay, no, I think I'm caught. If I missed your chat, I'm so sorry. I'm like, literally, I'm so sorry, but I'm so glad you guys are all here. Uh, fifth quarter tailgate here, Scott Pigsley, what's up? Oh my gosh, thank you guys for coming in. You guys are the best. Okay, oh, Ben Dramon is here. How did they put Weller 12 stickers on Yellowstone? Must have been a delivery mix-up. Oh my gosh, pay for play act. Weller 12 making me throw Facebook out the window. Literally everybody. Did y'all know Weller 12? Okay, no more talk about Weller 12 and Buffalo Trace. That's what they wanted us to do, and we did. All we did all day long was talk about, did you see Weller 12 on Yellowstone last night? Did you see the Buffalo Trace commercial? I've never even seen a Buffalo Trace commercial in my life. That was crazy. Um, Yeah, that was interesting. I loved Yellowstone, by the way. Oh, my God. I love that show. The premiere was fantastic. Oh, so good. Uh, do I think the samples are big enough? Yeah, these samples are, are big. They're two ounces. They're two ounce samples. I only did about half of them, maybe a quarter of them in my each glass because I'm not here to get like shiz face tonight. I'm just here to enjoy some whiskey and tell you guys what I think and, and try out this box. I think this is such a cool box. It's a cool concept, so... I'm excited that Blind Barrels let me try this and, and give it a shot. That guy is whack. He's Jeffrey Whack. Gonna pour myself some Oogadol, BRB. Oogadol. I love Art Bag Oogadol. So good. Okay. So, yeah. Make sure you subscribe to all the channels. Now, I'm gonna tell you guys, I really love Glass D. I love Glass C. A is good. I like it. B, I, I don't love B. I don't hate it, but I don't love it. B is, it's young. So on the nose on B, you get, it's really sweet. Also, it's very, very sweet and it's low proof. So it's sweet, caramel, vanilla, and it smells kind of like pasture-y, like fieldy, grainy, corny, a little bit corny, maybe wheat. I don't know. It's just like, Got a different smell that I don't love, but it's not bad. It's not bad. I'm being on. I'm just being honest here. Just giving you my honest feedback. B is my least favorite of these, and it's tough because it tastes. Whoa, honey. It's like honey. Yeah, it's got to be honey. Honey, vanilla, soft. It's very soft, so not in a bad way. It kind of tastes like it might be. It might be weeded. I don't know. Um. Oh, no! Hold on. I gotta wipe that off before we get in trouble here. Hold up. Sorry, guys. Gotta wipe that. Shoot. Sorry! Sorry, everybody. <laughs> Sorry, I spilled a little bit on my computer, so I wanted to wipe it up. I did not want that on my computer. It was like right on the edge of it, so I freaked out for a second. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Okay, so back to business here. Dang, that was the best one, too. I just caught the corner of my hand. I had it in a bad spot. Okay. Sheesh. Sheesh, Louise. Okay, back to it. All right, back in business. Now, what I was saying is Glass B, I need to pour a little bit more back in Glass D now. So Glass B just tastes a little bit younger, a little bit more like lower proof. Um, these are all a variety. Somebody asked me while I was trying to move my, are these all bourbons and rice? I don't believe so. I think there's a single malt in here. I think there's... There's definitely a single malt in here. Um, there's a rye, there's a bourbon, and there's one that might be a, a blend, like a burai or something. I'm not really sure. For, I'm not really honestly sure. But 
yeah, B, it ain't it for me. <laughs> or no common thing. There's no common thing. They just send you one. And let's see here. The bottles say, sorry, my phone, what the heck is going on here? So these are 50 mils, 50 milliliters, which means they're about 1.7 ounces. Yeah, 50 milliliters. That's what you get in these bottles. Uh, rest in peace, T. I did just like nearly ruin my computer there for a second. It's really cool. This is such a cool thing. If you guys have the chance to do it, it's really cool. It's really cool. And you could actually go in with a couple friends and do it. And then you could like all share them and do them in a, like a live stream, not a live stream, but if you wanted to, you could, but you could also do it like for a little party or a zoom call or something. I think that would be really cool. PC's going to develop a taste for whiskey. It's a Mac. So not a PC, but keep drinking more and it will fall. Well, party foul. I know. I would never do that to you. Wait, what would I never do? Yeah. Oh, it is my fault. It's Tommy D's fault. No, it's Zach Jones's fault. It's both of y'all's fault. Hit that like button. Yeah, if you guys haven't hit the like button, please hit the like button. I appreciate you guys for being here. Everybody, guys and gals, everybody that's here, thank you. Hello, we're all whiskey friends here. Heck yeah, we are. Cheers to you, T. Jarrett. What's up? Okay, so I am going to get back to ranking these and then I'm going to reveal them. So, A is like a little bit of spice, apple juice, Vegetal. <sighs> a little bit of caramel. Sweet like honey. It's sweet like honey. It's got a little bit of peat and it's funny. And by funny, I mean it's funny and good. I don't know what that was, but I'm weird as cool. <laughs> I didn't make up the dumbest songs. Like, I'm glad nobody really pays attention to my dumb songs. Okay. Whoa. That's got like a little bit of mesquite. It's like mesquite on the back end. Like mesquite smoke. Not like a super peat, like a bonfire or anything. It's like a mesquite cherry oak. Ooh, cherry oak. A mesquite cherry oak. Mesquite wood. That's what it tastes like. Woody. Not peaty. It's got the sweet, like apple. No. Uh, apple wood. You know the chips that you put in the smoker? Kind of tastes like honey, sweet honey, and then chips in the smoker. That's what it is. With a little proof behind it. It actually has a little proof behind it to back it up. Like maybe like 90, 90 something proof, 95, somewhere around there. Okay. It's still under 100 proof. It's not super warm. Now, what's up? Oh, I can't wait for 1923 to come out either. It's going to be awesome. I don't know. Maybe it's Johnny Walker. I don't think so. I don't know. Maybe. Could be. Could be anything. Cheech. What's up, Cheech? Cheers to you. Thanks for being here. Make sure you hit that like, thumbs up, subscribe, do all the things. I'm so weird. Okay. Back to C&D. I think it's going to come down to C&D. One's the rye. One's the bourbon. Ah. <sighs> I like them both. The bourbon is super rich and sweet, caramel, vanilla, a little bit of like red apple, some proof, a little bit of pepper on the back end, a good finish, a little bit oily, definitely oily. Hmm. It's good. And it's got like a little brown sugar in it too. It's really good. Just a couple more minutes before I reveal the winner. Oh, I don't think it's Wild Turkey 101. It's good, but it's not Wild Turkey 101. Not that I taste. Not, it tastes, it tastes different than that. Okay. Glass D. Oh gosh. It's like sweet brown sugar, bacon spices, like some cardamom, a little allspice, a little pine, 
a little bit of like a little bit of oakiness. Yeah, some oakiness. It does tingle the nose hairs just a little bit. Julie? I can't watch you anymore, Dara, since you knocked over a drink. What the hell? Yeah. What the hell? Nobody's ever done that before. <laughs> Julie, have you ever knocked over a drink before? <laughs> oh, boy. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. Julie, I freaking love you. I love you so much. <laughs> oh, also, I got to call you. I got to call you because Bill and I are coming to see you if it works out. But I got to call you. Um, is C the bourbon or D? Um, D is the bourbon. I flip-flopped them back. I couldn't decide which one I like better. I, whoo, that's warm. It's definitely warm, but it's so good. D and C are a toss-up. I really love D. I really love C. I just think I like everything about D over C. So, my final ranking is D, C, A, B. DC are in their own world. A is good, and it's it's good. I would recommend it. And B, I just, not necessarily for me. I just don't love it as much. So there's that. All right, now let me scan this QR code and so I can figure out what these are. This is so cute. So cute. Look at these little bottles. Like, look how cute these little bottles are. They're so cute. I don't think I can get it to focus anymore because I took... I set it up to eye focus and yeah, that's the worst part of it because my camera was trying to track everything, like track every movement and it was just getting annoying to people. So I'm still learning. Definitely still learning. Drum roll, please. Okay, let's go scan it. Scan and scan and scan in. Keep those cameras scanning. Scan with a QR code. Here we all. QR. Bye. Okay. This is fun. Okay. Click to reveal sample A. We're going to reveal sample B. So it comes up and it asks me like reveal. You guys can't see this very good. So I got to click each one to reveal what the samples are. So we're going to reveal in fourth place. Let's reveal it. You guys, I, well, okay. I'm not trying to confuse everybody here. D is the rye, C is the bourbon. 100%, there's no question. So if I confuse everybody, sorry. D is the rye, C is the bourbon, in my opinion. That's what I think. So let's figure out what they are. B, this is... Okay, I've never heard of this, but this is called Black Button Distilling in Rochester, New York. It's a four grain straight bourbon whiskey, 84 proof, a minimum of two years old. It's 60% 60 60 corn, 20% wheat. What did I say? I thought it was a weeded whiskey. It's a weeded bourbon. Interesting, but it's a four grain, so it's not weeded. Just kidding. It's a four grain. I'm an idiot. It's a four grain. So this has got corn, wheat, rye, and malted barley. All grown in New York. Interesting. That's super, super interesting. Okay. Huh. This is really cool because you can go learn about it. You can learn about the distillery. You can get the tasting notes, all that. Like when you click on what the reveal is. So that's cool. Okay. So that one, once again, was... A four grain from Black Button Distilling in Rochester, New York. Has anybody heard of Black Button Distilling? Curious. Okay. Now, moving on to Glass A. Glass A is... Uh-oh, I'm not going to be able to say this right. I'm going to screw this up. Hey, it's the single malt. It's a single malt. I was right. Oh, what? Yes. Whenever I said mesquite smoked malted barley, that's what this is. A hundred percent mesquite smoked malted barley from Colgekin. Colgekin. Colg How do you say that? Colgekin. Colgekin? C-O-L-K-E-G-A-N. It's from Santa Fe Spirits in Santa Fe, New Mexico. It's Colgekin. Uh, oh. 
Oh. Oh. Just, just ignore me, okay, Nate? Shout out to, from Cincinnati, Ohio, Cats and Ants here. What's up, DD Ants? Cheers to you. Matt! Happy belated birthday, Matt! Cheers to you! Thanks for being here! <laughs> Matt Man is champ 2023. I mean, that'd be cool. I didn't... I still don't know all the rules. That's ironic. It's t totally ironic. Okay, so... Glass A, which is in third place, is 100% mesquite smoked malted barley, 90 proof, 92 proof, three-year-old. Okay, that's super interesting. Wow. The tasting notes are like literally what I was saying. That is crazy. Okay. Anyhow, I don't know if I said the name right or if I butchered it. Have y'all heard of this one before? The one I just said. I don't know. I have never heard of it. Santa Fe Spirits. Interesting. Okay. Now, let's get to my two favorites. Let's reveal them. In Glass C, which is, I think, the bourbon is what I think is a bourbon, a cask strength bourbon. It's good. It's really freaking good. I love it. I really freaking love it. All right. Let's see what reveal. Reveal time. Sample C. Holy moly, you guys. Wow. This is Penelope. This is a Penelope barrel strength. This is a Batch 10, 115.2 proof, aged four to five and a half years. This is 80% corn, 6% wheat, 11% rye, and 3% malted barley. So it's a four grain. Wow. It's so good. It really is good. It tastes, I like this better than the, than the Penelope barrel strength I have on my shelf right now. This is good. I like, I like the one I have on my shelf, but I think I like this one a little better. I'd have to try them. Now I'm going to try them side by side because I'm curious. Okay. Now, Penelope, a special recipe they made just for us. That is awesome. I love it. Ah, so good. Okay. So now we are going to reveal the winner of tonight's blind battle from blind barrels. Uh, how many percent proof again? Uh, this one is, Penelope is 115.2 proof. 115.2. I like it. Mm, it's good. It is good. It's good. Penelope does make good stuff. It's really good. It's not Weller 12. Get out of here, Zach Jones. Julie says, I knocked over two tonight. <laughs> Call me. <laughs> oh, Julie, I love you. Okay. Okay, now let's go to the winner. The winner of tonight's whiskey battle. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. Oh, dang. Wow. Okay. This is Mammoth Distilling in Traverse City, Michigan. I have a story for you there, actually. This is a Northern Rye single barrel, aged in Weller barrels. This is 128 proof, 15 years. Wow. Holy moly. Ah, I love it. Okay, so when we were at the Bourbon Junkies meetup, we got to try some of Mammoth. And they had this, like, I want to say it was like a 16-year 16, 16 cash strength bourbon? I believe that's what it was that I loved. I absolutely loved it. I'm guessing, I don't know where, I'm I'm wondering, I don't know what the mash bill is on this one. This is rye, definitely rye, but. Wow. Yeah, it's rye. This is rye. Oh, the 15-year the rye is what we tried at the Bourbon Junkie meetup. And it was insanely good. Like, so good. And this one is very freaking good, too. Oh, I love it. Oh, Brian Bailey brought the Penelope Tokai. Tokashi, Tokai. Oh. Aged in well, Weller barrels, close enough. It actually kind of fits in with the theme of the night, right? Everybody's talking the 12-year. Dang. Okay, so if you guys want to know one more time what these were. Wow. 
those are really good. Like, that's really good. Super good. Oh, Sarah, I want this now. So freaking good. Okay, so glass B, we're going to go back to this one more time, is from Black Button Distilling in Rochester, New York. Glass A was the Colgecon, Col, 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 I can't say it, Santa Fe Spirits in Santa Fe, New Mexico, the single malt mesquite smoked malted barley. That was wild. Super wild. I'm so glad that I figured out what that was. Like when I was tasting, I was like, this is definitely like mesquite something. Like it tastes like smoked wood chips and honey. It was interesting. Super interesting. Glass C. Penelope. And that was a single barrel. Well, obviously it's a barrel. Penelope bourbon barrel strength batch 10. Batch 10. Words are hard. And then in my first place glass which we just found out was Mammoth Distilling, Traverse City, Michigan, a hundred, a 15 year old rye. It's so freaking good. So freaking good. Ah, okay. So if you guys are interested, check out blindbarrels.com. That was so fun and super cool. Like that, this is really cool. Um, did I ever get, <laughs> did, did you ever get drunk just by tasting or taking shots during your live stream? Just curious. Uh, yes. The answer is yes. I get, I have gotten pretty tipsy during live streams just from doing tastings. I don't really do shots unless we have like a, like a loser shot or something that I have to take. Like don't usually shoot them. I love rye. I wish there were more age stated, higher proof options available in the market. The cool thing about rye is rye actually age faster than bourbons or so I've heard. And the sweet, they say the sweet spot for a rye is like six to seven years. So there's that. What's up, Darrell? Cheers. Thanks for being here. How you doing? Ah, that was a fun, like, that was definitely super fun. What do you guys think? Anybody going to check it out? I don't know. That was really cool, though. That was super fun. Thank you, Blind Barrels. Okay. I'm going to just be, like, drinking these all the time. Brian Bailey, I am not drunk now. I just have, okay, people, I think sometimes people misperceive my personality for being drunk and I think that does happen like I've noticed that people will be like oh man how many videos she, has she recorded like she's got to be drunk and then I'm just like that's my personality like I'm just kind of silly and I'm just me so there you have it anyhow uh like I told you guys earlier we have a lot of fun things coming out this week a lot of extra reviews and then admin next month. I'm so excited. I cannot wait. So there's that. That was a fun live stream. That was a fun blind. New video out tomorrow. I'm probably going to wrap it up because I know there are a lot of other channels on tonight. And I got to get a little rest. And then, yeah. Random question. Care to share some of your discovery of the year whiskeys? Oh, that's a really good question. Like a good question. Um. Lucky seven. I think lucky seven was like one of my favorite, like new, like whiskey that I didn't try until this year. Uh, John, the 10% off code, he said whiskey 10, whiskey 10 was the 10% off code. But, uh, I think lucky seven was one of my like one. And the, I mean, I didn't really try the Calumets too much last year. Calumet. Um, yeah. That's just some that just some right off the cuff. I would have let me have to think about it. I'll think about it for sure and let you know. Anyhow, there's no slurring. There's no drunk. I'm not I'm not drunk. Thank you. Um, I am gonna wrap this stream up so you guys can jump on the other channels. But I really appreciate you joining tonight. It was super fun. Uh got another fun live stream coming up next week. I really do appreciate your support, though, everybody. I really do thank you so much. Calumet 16 is the bomb. It's so good. But Lucky 714, you're the proprietor. Bye, ya. Money. Thanks so much, Eric. Thanks for joining in and being here, sharing your commentary. I loved it. I love it. Everybody, thank you so much. I love you all. Be back with so much more of The Average Drinker tomorrow, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, literally the only day this week I don't have a video coming out. 
is Friday. Yep. So you get all kinds of the average drinker this week. Thank you guys. Love you. See you soon. Thanks for stopping in. I really do appreciate you. Bye. Have a good night, everybody. Have a good rest of your week. Take care.